Hey folks, welcome back. I'm your host, RR Slugger, and today we're taking a look at 6889 Recon Robot from the nearly 30 year old Lego space theme Spirius. Since this is our first encounter with this spacefaring faction, I thought it wise to briefly mention what they're all about. Spirius is a small LEGO space theme from 1994 consisting of only a handful of sets. As the name implies, these models are all generally based around reconnaissance and intelligence gathering, true spy work. Spirius agents are known to have run-ins with other contemporary groups, such as the Ice Planet Miners, whose satellite and telemetry data could fetch a high price on the black hole market. Keeping a weathered eye out for the dreaded space police is always an agent's best means of eluding capture, though. Speaking of agents, the Spirius theme provides us with three variations, though our set today contains only one, the Spirius Chief. This figure features the theme standard black, blue, and red uniform, albeit with a figure-exclusive printed helmet. Though this piece would see inclusion in a few other sets within 1994, it was always worn by the Spirius Chief. Not only that, but the Chief's grizzled mug beneath the trans neon green visor is also exclusive to this character. The other members of the Spirius faction have their own notable pieces of importance, but we'll talk about those folks at a later date. For now, let's take a look at our main model. Consisting of 133 pieces, the Recon Robot is truly indicative of the LEGO Group's obsession with robots and mechs in the mid to late 90s. Despite the Icarian aspirations of the set designers arguably trying to reach beyond the capabilities of the LEGO system of that era, these robots still have a number of tricks up their sleeve. Before we go much further though, I want to frame the discussion we're about to have. It's relatively useless to judge these mechs by modern standards, as the essential components they now rely on just didn't exist yet. The but does it have knees conversations serve no purpose when the mech in question doesn't even have legs. The Recon Robot makes extensive use of a fingered hinge joint system, a now long-retired series of parts that provided unimpeded travel across a wide range. Even though I primarily talk about older, retired LEGO sets on this channel, I will say that this is one connection system type I don't miss. While the fluid motion they afford is welcome, there's a general flakiness to the joints that can cause both a loss of friction and cohesion over time and age. All too often, I run across sets containing fingered hinge joints that have started to splay apart. Luckily, likely in the interest of preserving LEGO part standards, this joint type was slowly phased out at the turn of the century and saw full proper retirement by the mid-2000s. Still, the system possessed some unique attributes and connectors, and the arms of the Recon Robot showcase this well. Not only do we have movement at the shoulders, but at the elbows and wrists, too. The hands are made up of a pair of pinchers that utilize a rather specific mold. Part 2880 was included in less than 40 sets during its life and saw retail release in only two colors. With that being said, I noticed on Bricklink that this is one of those parts that can be found in many different hues on the aftermarket, if you're interested in such a thing. All this fluidity and range of motion doesn't equate to universal movement, however. Without rotation at the shoulders or elbows, the Recon Mech is rather limited when trying to create certain poses. It's no Galador joint or ball and cup system, but for 133 pieces, it gets the job done. Moving upwards, the Recon Robot's head is set upon a turntable that offers a 360 degree surveillance of its surroundings. The head itself is constructed using a large single brick as its basis, part 2434. Modern builders take note, this is what snot style construction looked like in the 90s. This strange piece was first introduced in 1990 and saw moderate usage throughout the decade. It can sometimes be hard to visually discern which sets utilized it, as it often scrolls away under other pieces within a build. However, against all odds, somehow this mold still exists today, despite its rarity within modern sets. I was shocked to see that it was included in a Monkey Kid set just a couple of years ago. Wow. 
The midsection of the robot is largely comprised of tall inverted slope bricks in order to create a contour towards the waist. The chest includes a rather rare trans red panel for our minifigure to spy through. Indeed, the recon robot can be piloted by our Spirius chief, who can operate it from this rather precarious position. The printed console piece is a really interesting one, perhaps depicting an onboard AI or maybe an enemy robot in its sights. Altogether, I'd say this feature just barely works for me. I find it rather bothersome how the chief basically has to bonk his head up against the robot's back and doesn't even get a chair for lumbar support. Those oxygen tanks are probably pretty heavy. Luckily, the robot can be operated remotely using this 1x2 printed control chip piece. Or is it actually a device containing stolen intelligence? As the LEGO Maniac, you get to decide. Either way, the chip can be stored within the recon robot's main data core. Or is it a storage bay? Y you get the idea, there's a lot of imagination at play here. Within, well, uh, quite literally the rear end of the robot, we have another area for storing items behind this hinged flap. Inside we have what might be merely a scanning tool, but given the chief's mischievous expression, I'm willing to bet this is a laser weapon of some kind. Two more can be found flanking either side of the robot's waist. Below all of this are the six main drive wheels, supporting the rest of the model. Overall, I think there's hardly an iota of wasted space here. The set was designed by the legendary Jörn Thompson, who made excellent use of what he had to work with. Jörn had a hand in creating so many exceptional LEGO space sets in the 90s, though sadly he passed away just this year. We'll be looking at more of his models together in the future though, you can count on that. In fact, let's do so right now. Jörn was probably behind these alternate builds if I had to guess. Wow, is it just me or did they put the wrong model on the front of the box? Maybe I'm biased against lumpy, frumpy LEGO robots, but some of these alternate builds look far more appealing to me. Let's build them all and try them out. This first model looks to be a sleek suborbital craft that the Chief can use to cruise across the planet. The ship reuses so many of the fingered hinge joints to great effect here. From rear ailerons, to forward scanners, to angled flight controls, this build has it all. Using the same connection system, the wings can assume an aggressive posture when stalking prey, or even retract when landing. Not to be too hyperbolic, but I think this vessel surely surpasses the main model we started with. Spirius already had a respectable air force, but I even feel this build beats out some of those retail sets as well. I won't be going back to the recon robot with this one, I can tell you that much. Let's see if the next alt build continues this trend. The second model seems to be a six-wheeled rover carrying some large equipment in the rear. My first guess was an anti-air weapon system of some kind, though upon building it, I think it's more likely a scanning device, akin to the AWACS system. The data it collects is then transcribed onto this computer chip which can be shared between agents. The rear axle has some minor amount of suspension built into it, and all six wheels can easily make contact with the ground by pressing on this central printed tile. The chief can pilot the vehicle from this forward section, and even though he's exposed, he's not defenseless, as there's a place to store his laser here as well. While I don't think this model is quite as strong as the previous one, it's still a total winner in my books. Honestly, there's so much more to Spirius than what's printed on the front of the box. Let's see if the final alternate build secures us the hat trick. Alright, we were bound to lose eventually. <laughs> I don't think this single-seater rocket is bad per se, but it's far more indicative of the dumb fun I typically expect from alternate builds. Understandably, I don't anticipate any alternate build to exceed the main model it's built from, but here we are. With regards to this rocket specifically, I actually think it works much better if we remove the minifigure and imagine it to be micro-scaled, perhaps a Spirius command ship. To me, the excellence of these alternate builds is almost an admission that the LEGO system just wasn't ready to handle the task of making convincing mechs yet. In my opinion, the pieces of this era were far better suited to build models like these, though that would change rapidly over the next few years. 
When we finally dive into Roboforce in 2024, I think we'll get a better sense of how Spireus walked so Roboforce could run. I'm really looking forward to covering that theme, but there's still so much to do until then. Thanks for watching, everyone. Once again, this video was brought to you by the Summer of Slug 2023, and my thanks go out to all of those who helped make it happen. If you want in on the party, check the link in the description. I've been your host, R.R. Slugger, and I'll see you next time for another video.